Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. You can maybe, if you're listening, hear my smile. <laughs> That's a thing. It's a real thing. And uh, yeah, all three of us are, uh, are, are smiling these days, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, a lot of times we have Max and Terry with us, but you know what? Terry's got a family thing, so we've, we've called in a favor, right? He's... He's back. Mm -hmm. you, you, everybody, you're going to hear his voice in a second. And if you're looking at him, you're welcome, everybody. But, yeah, Dave, Dave is back. Dave, great to see you again, man. Thank you. I'm not sure how I, uh, how I follow up on that uh, introduction there, Jerry. Thank you. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's great to be on again. Uh, it's a little yeah, bit I hard. And then I'd like it to be to get on, but it's good to pop in every so often, so to speak. Ah. Very, very welcome to have you, man. Anytime, anytime. Obviously, we could be rolling four deep, and Dave says he wants to be on. We'll mm -hmm. find a way to make that frame fit five. See how that would work? I'm sure, you yeah. will, mate. <laughs> um, so, I, and, and, and you know, I said I would do this a little bit later, but those of you who are watching also may notice Max looks, he's normally just looks crisp and clean and varied, but. He stayed up a little late last night, everybody. We we beat United 4-0. We kind of just, it was a choke slam of a game. You know what I mean? So Max has earned it. So if you see Max yawning, looking a little, yeah, young fella's earned it. All right? <laughs> see, this, that, that's kind of how, how I see my day plan those. And then by 9 p.m. last night, it was just conked out on the couch. It just shows the... Uh, even me, the age is catching up a little bit. So fair play, Max, for sticking that one out. Yeah, no kidding. I, I'm just trying to fathom the amount of drinks you had and just thinking, uh, probably half of the first one would have put me uh, out of commission the next day. So he's he's scrapping. Just saying, he's he's got a he's got a good heart to be back on the show this uh, today. Uh, I, United reaction, match reaction, four 0 Everton. Um, I want to start uh, just to kind of be a, a little bit more fun. Uh, Dave, which was which was your favorite goal of the four? See, we just can't mm -hmm. say this often. Normally, it's like oh, uh, you know, two choice of two. No, we got four choices this time. Which which one of mm. yours would, thought you know what? That's the one that really you know got me excited. Well, for me, I don't know. I, I put a thread out there today that you may have may not have seen um looking at the first goal with Charleston's goal that for me was the favorite now I know the Sigurdsson and Luca Dean strikes were unbelievable um even Walcott's finish was fantastic but what I love about that first goal was the the detail that's obviously gone into that on the training ground um because it, hopefully people listen to this and go and have a look at the thread on Twitter basically that goal and the build-up to it was a complete carbon copy to Jagielka's goal against Arsenal in the sense that how we set up from the throw where the throw was uh, delivered into, the flick on. And then obviously on Sunday, uh, Richarlison's done that fantastic overhead kick. What a lot of people, including myself, missed against Arsenal was he went to do that exact same over overhead kick. Uh, but Cavalier gets in the way and then the ball kind of bobbles towards Jagielka, thankfully, and he... He scores it, uh, but just just to know that they've obviously spent a lot of time on the training ground perfecting that whole move, and then to see it in such a big game lead to a goal, uh, it was just fantastic. Great goal. Yeah, I I was gonna pretend that I had not seen that thread, and like <laughs> and like pretend like it was my analysis and just watch your face, David. But you beat me to it. <laughs> Totally ruined it. <laughs> like I was, yeah, I didn't even would, like you, it. You would have broke my heart there, Jerry. I'll be honest. I was literally just going to sit here and bite my lip and watch you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. I mean, it's a. It's an awesome thread. I. I read it, and uh, the only reason I didn't like it is because I didn't want to blow my cover. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's. It, it's you, one. You, Batman. <laughs> but it, honestly, uh, it's one of those things where I, when I watch a lot of a lot of games, I don't understand why more teams aren't thinking about those types of opportunities you know i mean every i'm not an experienced you know coach but when i was coaching 
We always had one kid who could throw the ball a mile, and we treated those like corner kick plays. And honestly, mm. we scored often on those long throws mm. just because, for some reason, teams are not as prepared for them. They're not thinking of them as goal-scoring yeah. goal opportunities. But when you got a guy like Luca Dean who can put it like right there at the, you know, at the kind of, I guess, near where the six, the corner of the six, yeah, just yeah. putting it right there for that guy to flick on, I mean, why not? It makes sense, really. If you actually think about the technique, it's, it, it's you know, with a cross a lot of the time, you can put it in and around an area, but it's more difficult with your foot to control where you deliver a ball, whereas a throw-in, it's a lot easier to just kind of put it in a specific area. So you can then attack that, especially with throw-ins. Uh, everyone's in a standing position. If you can just get an attack enough to get a flick on, as they've been trying to do, and then you've got someone of... Richardson's quality to to do something with it in the middle, then it does make sense. And there's been rumours that Liverpool brought in a throwing coach this season, which initially was sniggered at, but uh, it speaks for itself. And when you think of how successful the lap was at Stoke for those couple of seasons as well, I mean, I remember one time a goalkeeper kicking it out for a corner rather than a throwing, just simply to avoid a the lap throw. Yeah. Uh, did you did, were you around on the Delap days, Jerry? I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, just to give give a bit Max would back me up here to give it a bit of context. There's a guy called Rory Delap uh, at Stoke around the late noughties, and he had this unbelievable like cannon like throw that he could put straight into the box from. Sometimes it felt he was near the halfway line, but it was just phenomenal, and it got to a stage where. Stoke had like ball boys with towels ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you remember, don't you, Max? Yeah. I let Max finish it off, but it was um, it, it become such an asset for them that teams were petrified of it going out for throwing. No, oh, yeah, hundred percent, and you know they they had quite a a, a um, I know a, like common trait of being like a rugby team, basically, just how rough they were and. Whenever you know, whenever they used to get a throw in, Stoke fans used to cheer like you know, there's a goal. Yeah. Was, you know, more often than not, it led to a goal scoring opportunity. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's right. Uh, Max, which of uh, which of the? Oh, by the way, I'm going to look up Delap Stoke now. I've got to start. Yeah, I've, I've got to check yeah, that out. To check that out. Uh, but Max, your uh, your favorite goal from the weekend? Because I, I got to be honest, the uh, the Richarlison goal was my favorite because of exactly the fact of the design of it. What was what was yours? Mm -hmm. Well, it would have been that Gilfie Sigurdsson corner if it wasn't for that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a good call. Velocity. Great call. I don't know, 3-0 three, three up and you score a corner, like, that's when you know you're taking the piss. But um, I'd just like to back the corner of the, you know, the, for the creator of the first goal, Luca Dean. Mm. Um, again, similar points to, the, to the, um, the first goal. We're becoming, you know, a consistent threat from set pieces now. That was originally from a corner. Mm. Comes out on the half volley across his body, um, strikes it perfectly, lifts the goal, lifts the goal off his hinges. Like it was just a, when that third goal went in, as I said, it just it had that. It was as if we were taking the piss, you know what I mean? It was like it, it became a more relaxed atmosphere around the ground, and it was like celebratory. Um, but yeah, it, it was it was it was uh, really amusing to see, like particularly those first three goals. Like each one was better than the other. Almost in a sense. The technique um, for that one, man. The technique was just in the patience required to be able to calm yourself and kind of walk a little bit backwards to kind of ah. Uh, yeah, and guide it across yeah. your body. It was yeah, absolutely the, fantastic. I feel like the best compliment I could give that goal was when I first watch it. I think it took a deflection on the way in. But, I mean, there was a for me. I suppose it varies where you watch it, but there was that many bodies there. I thought it's obviously going wide. Took a deflection. It's caught. The gale off guard, maybe, but when you watch it again, it, as as you both say, the technique is so good that it, it just it's it's faultless. The finish is faultless. Um, it was a great goal. Yeah, it's funny. Like yesterday afternoon, uh, took took Bennett out to practice some, um, and he's six. And what he wanted to do was practice curving in corners, like Sigurd said, mm. and he wanted to practice yeah. throw ins. Like Luca Dean <laughs> trying to like be because at their age, like hardly anybody can throw the ball very well. You know, it's no. it's actually sort of hilarious the way it almost turns into like a jump shot from basketball. But <laughs> <laughs> sat there and practiced that for a while. And I know there had to be people watching, like, why are they practicing throw ins? But for the exact reason why you practice throw because it's an additional weapon that your team can utilize. Mm. Uh, 
Um, so uh, let's get on to uh, most important player you thought because everybody played well. You know, Max, who you thought? Who do you think the most important player was yesterday? Dolphy Sigurdsson. He's just absolutely sensational. I I'd, I'd go as far to say that was his best game in an Everton kit. I think that was his fifth career goal against Manchester United too. So it's good to see he's got that in his yeah. lottery. You know. Big goal against big teams. Um, yeah, it was just so intelligent. And when I was watching match of the day, I think Martin Keown hit the nail on the head. He is, you know, he's the brain, isn't he? Mm. Uh, and he, you know, he polarizes opinion because on his off days, he's almost like a passenger. But when he's got that influence over a game, when his, you know, when his first touch is there, and he's he, he runs, he closes down every ball, and he's playing with conviction. Like he's just a joy to watch. Um, and that that goal. How it kind of went from back to front in the counter attack and transition was absolutely fantastic, and I think Adrissa Gay deserves a compliment for that too. And how he carried mm. it forward because I know his his decision making on the ball has been heavily criticised since he's been at the club. And you know, if there's any indicator that it's getting better, he did lay that ball off, which is still a lot to do for Sigurdsson. Mm. But you know, that that Sigurdsson's bread and butter, isn't it? Getting receiving the ball from range and, and finding the target. Um, to be, to, you know, to to, to play devil's advocate, I, I, I do agree that you know United were nowhere near as good. You know, they, they didn't make it as comp- anywhere near as competitive as the children, and you know they were they were half-heartedly closing balls down, and you know they were losing every first, second, and third ball. But you know, take nothing away from from Gilfy Sigurdsson. I thought he was absolutely sensational. The um, the assist for Walcott's goal as well. Yeah, Matic was really slow closing down Sigurdsson on that goal. Really slow. Didn't really get tight on him at all. Uh, but Sigurdsson's uh, pressing, his pressing work has, I mean, I, I knew he was a hard worker, but when you actually see how many people he closes down and how he's closing down those passing lanes, uh, his work with Calvert-Lewin kind of up front, like work with them working together, uh, it's, it's like they're all, they're starting to actually think together and they're on board with what Silva's trying to do. Uh, it's really mm-hmm. impressive. Sigurdsson's the first name I wrote down. Uh, I wrote down some others though. Um, Dave, who do you think uh, was the most important player yesterday? Uh, and if you thought Sigurdsson, cool, yeah. but if you want to go with someone else, that's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Sigurdsson again. I, I will, I, I will go make a, a small comment on Sigurdsson because um, he was phenomenal again, and it, it, I, I love how the guy was getting a lot of uh, criticism for the goal they conceded against them. But for me, I just think. He hits the ball so true and so quick that he doesn't give the goalkeeper any time to prepare to kind of make that save. Mm. Um, which, at what point do we credit the player for taking that shot rather than blaming the goalkeeper? You know, none of us, and even the pundits in the studios, you know, they haven't got a patch on their goalkeeper knowledge or skill compared to the guy. And for him to struggle with it, for me, that's a that's a, a credit to the mm. player who takes the shot. Thought he was fantastic again, and just Sigurdsson on the whole, you know, certainly a couple of months ago, it was quite popular to be calling for him to be dropped, and you know, people are counting how many touches he has, and as Max touched on, how he's invisible, and I, 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 I this, this is what they all, this is what they were all kind of clinging on to a little bit when Everton weren't playing well, but you know, I, I put a, a tweet out on it yesterday, and it's something I've been saying behind behind the scenes a little bit to to a few and work. You know, if we were to change the system the way people want, so basically pull Sigurdsson out so we can play a different formation, is was the argument. If we do that, straight away you need that amended formation to find 13 league goals and then some to justify his remo- removal from the squad, which for me just seems ludicrous. Max has said he, he was the best player on the pitch and he's been the best player for a few times. And, you know, he, he, he'll always guarantee you at least one, you know, defence split and pass in a game and it might not always be converted but he was phenomenal again I, I probably not my maybe second man the match to Calvert-Lewin just because he had a difficult game at Fulham like they all did but he, either side of that really he's been phenomenal and again he was just doing all that hard work and Everton have got the fourth best pressing numbers in the, in the Premier League and I think a lot of it's down to his hard work at the top in pressing the, the centre-backs and I wasn't surprised. Everton found it quite easy yesterday because stylistically, 
United couldn't have come up with a worse side. Our press is fantastic. They're terrible with the ball at the back. Mm. Uh, so a lot of it goes to Calvert Lewin. So he, he, he gets a nod off me. Yeah, he's literally doing everything except scoring goals, and I feel like the goals are going to mm-hmm. come. You know, uh, he's just yeah, doing eventually. a lot of stuff that uh, other strikers don't really deem important. They almost feel like some strikers yeah. feel like they're they're too good for it. You know what I mean? Like they shouldn't yeah. have to deal with it. I'm not talking about any particular well, striker. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I was going to say maybe some are. Maybe these elite elite strikers are going to score thirty goals a season. <laughs> fine, but. You know, Calvert Lewin isn't going to do that, but instead he's identified. Listen, I'm not going to score 20 goals a season, but I'm going to make myself indispensable in other ways, and hopefully the goals will come, which is a credit to him. Yeah, 100%. Uh, yeah. Uh, I want to spare a thought for somebody who wasn't really supposed to be starting yesterday, but uh, because of the suspension to Gomez. Max's man crush. You know what? He came in and defended well. He played well. I I was worried. I was worried because I thought I actually thought he was still injured. I thought he was still hurt. But mm. more touches, more touches than any other Everton <laughs> player on the field. Good. It's I don't know. Yeah. What are we gonna do with this guy? This is so. It's like you know when he comes in, we play well and we defend well. Clean sheets. You know. Mm. <laughs> I was, it was weird because in, in the preview for the game, we were kind of leaning more in favour of seeing, because I mean, uh, the initial discussion started on... Tom Davies, on yeah. Tom Davies. That, for me, was kind of predicated on if Man United play McTominay, mm. then you kind of just put Davies in there to match for legs, but Snyder 100% compensated oh, for that perfectly, you know, and as always, when he's on form, he complemented the defence mm. excellently. Mm-hmm. Um. I'm feeling very smug about myself because after Everton beat Cardiff, I basically put it down to Schneiderlin. Um And if you remember, the, the landscape was a lot different then because we, we were terrible. We hadn't been winning games and it was it was just looking a little bit precarious, wasn't it? And we went and won 3-0 at Cardiff. And I thought his impact on the team was massive in the sense that he anchored the side, let the two wing-backs push on. Um, I just done it perfectly. And then he, he didn't done the same against Liverpool. On the, the, mm-hmm. the, the game following, and then he was dropped against Newcastle, and we went and got beat. But I'm not. I don't think the two were linked because we actually played well. Newcastle was just really unlucky in that, uh, or stupid in that last half hour or so. But I wasn't surprised that um, he ended up having a good game because when he's asked to do that role, he does it well. But like you two, certainly in my preview, I I thought Davis should have been the guy to come in, given his age and probably is important to the side long term compared to Schneiderlin, but hats off again, yeah, he's, he's Schneiderlin come in and done done a good job. Yeah, it, just because you mentioned the Liverpool game there, I just want to throw the question out there, do we think the sirens have a psychological advantage? <laughs> bring, like, I, I think it's got to be raised as a legitimate question now, mm-hmm. you know, no, no goals conceded since we've introduced it, mm-hmm. and the, the atmosphere is 100% better, like it's yeah. significantly improved. I, I genuinely think it had some sort of psychological advantage to the players and the fans. Yeah, I I really I really like it, really enjoy it, uh, and it definitely has had an impact. But if we look at that run, we've had Liverpool at home, big massive game. Probably one of them, it did that felt massive this season because of obviously how good they are this year. You, then you've got Chelsea, another big game, uh, Arsenal, um, and then United. I'd be interested to see like a Burnley at home on a Wednesday night, whether it would have the same same impact. Well, uh, that was always, you know, the, the biggest point of discussion, particularly for Silver, is that you know we haven't been we haven't been winning against these top six teams. Mm-hmm. And when was that? The first time we beat Man United since what, two thousand and fifteen? Yeah, so, it was. Yeah. yeah, it was quite so, a few games. Yeah, it um, adds that edge for those big games. Or, yeah, no, I, I love, I, I do, I like it. Um, I, I agree and. On, you oh no, you're good, man. Today? I was listening. <laughs> I mean, you guys are getting into the exact question I had, though. So it's kind of a it's pretty mm. pretty good uh, psychic job by by you guys. Uh, I was gonna say uh, this momentum that we have at home. I mean, uh, they've done a really. I mean, I, it was that group, the originals, that have, have been a big part of trying to bring a, a legitimate, like, bring an atmosphere. You know, inject more atmosphere into Goodison, a, a stadium that's already 
conducive to being like really loud. And they're, they're, they can kind of made some suggestions and a lot of people have been, uh, the sirens, I, I gotta be honest, when I watch it on, on TV, they play the sirens and, and they're in the tunnel. I watched, because I'm a nerd, I watched some fan videos of like outside the stadium and I wish on TV they would play it outside yeah. the stadium to heal, hear the crowd better, to hear the sirens better. I think atmospherically mm-hmm. it would be so much better for, for viewers at home to actually appreciate that. Certain stadiums, they do that. And it is, a, it is a, mm-hmm. but yeah. things like that, how do we maintain this kind of why our play is just seems like you know when we went to Fulham it was lacking severely compared to mm. our our home form. Uh, is it home mm. versus away form and uh, you know just momentum and mojo from the crowd you know you know sustaining our squad or is it just something just up here psychologically we need to get a little bit tougher to be more consistent. Um, I, I think consistency is the big one. See, the Fulham defeat last week, although it was a real kick in the teeth, my opinion was something was going to give eventually because there's, if you look at Everton, Wolves, Watford, uh, even West Ham, Leicester, they, they have all got decent core sides. Like, they are good teams. And on the day, they're, they're, they're as good as a top six side. But there's a, there's a reason why those sides, including us, uh, Tito and seventh and below, and the top six are both because... They just can't do it consistently week in, week out. And that's Everton's problem. So it, it almost feels once you, you can put a good run on, but it, until you build that consistency, um, it's not going to last. And that's what happened to Fulham. And I just think away form in general has been a real Achilles heel for Everton for a long time. Um, I know we had a good result at West Ham, but we've never really had a season since perhaps Martinez's first where we've been a great away side. Um, so I think away form is a massive one. I don't really know what the blame is. Maybe there's that kind of mental mm. fragility. But I think these results at home have been massive to really? build on that because we haven't beat the top six side now long, and now to beat three of them, hold Liverpool as well. Which you know we we poke fun at Liverpool, but they are a phenomenal side this season. Yeah. So to keep them out as well, I think there's there's been a bit of a, a monkey shaking off the back. Um, so it, it's been an Progress, interesting period. Essentially, it's just it's it's a step. Progress. It's a step. This whole thing is a process. It's not going to be an overnight thing. And mm-hmm. I think that's that's the way I'm looking at this. I we we go into every game thinking, mm-hmm. you know what, we can actually win this instead of, oh hell, let's just bunker back and park the bus. You know what I mean? We're actually having a go at yeah. everyone. Love that. Mm-hmm. Um, Max, uh, I've, I've yeah. heard it said that we have trouble with teams that don't really go at us as much, and that's why we're playing a little bit stronger against some of these top six sides lately because other team is kind of possessing the ball more, and then we're kind of pressing, getting the ball, and then turn, turning it over really quick and countering. Uh, but with Fulham, it was more us possessing. You know what I mean? Uh, what, how do you feel mm. about that? Well, I think that's complement to our, the, you know, mm-hmm. the pressing game that's been implemented by Marco Silver and you know, like Dave is really good at the fourth best in the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So, you know, and like I've said previously, I don't think the top six sides. I mean, the, well, those in contention for a Champions League space, so the likes of Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester United. I don't think they've been as consistent or as, you know, uh, as elite as they have in, in previous years. So I think, you know, by that token, we have capitalised on some of their misfortunes. But, mm-hmm. you know, but as you see in mainstream media, the, you know, the immediate shift seems to be on how poor, you know, insert here, Arsenal, Chelsea, Manchester United have been. But obviously, after after the performance like that, you know, with four goals, we're, you know, we're seeing that clinical edge now where we're converting those chances. So you know you've got to give us a you've got to give Everton the due. Um, well, so, just yeah. on Max on Max's point there with, with sort of more clinical edge, I just had a look and Everton's xG, which is basically expected goals, which assesses like the the quality of a chance and gives it a, a score from zero to one, basically. I'll try not to go too into it now in case people don't care about it and they'll just be bored, which <laughs> does happen. Um, but Everton's xG was. 
about 0.95 yesterday, which theoretically means, given the chances they had, they should have scored around one goal rather than four. So what that kind of shows you is Everton were clinical in the chances they had, uh, which makes sense if you think it's Sigurdsson's shot and Dean's shot like nine times out of ten, they wouldn't have led to goals. But such was the the quality of the strikes they did. Um, so I think he's spot on in what Max is saying about how, mm-hmm. how clinical they were on Sunday. Yeah, um, 15 shots, eight on target. Just yeah. you know, it seems to be commonplace. And you know, as I said, I, I'm, I'm like I'm, I like to see this emerging as a characteristic of a Marco Silva side. It's like laws of averages, you know. Just have a pop, have a pop. If you don't buy a ticket, you're not going to win the lottery. To use the most overused cliche in football <laughs> history, but you know, we're we we we're, we're getting shots in on goal and the goal the goal. The other now, thing is, is great to see. United's first shot on goal wasn't until like what the 86th minute. Yeah. I mean, and that is another trend that's yeah. starting to happen. We're holding teams to very few shots and even fewer shots on goal. That's nice. Yeah, we've got to give, we've got we've got to give the defense the you know full complement to that performance. Yeah. Uh, and Keane, you know, they kept tab, they kept tabs on the likes of Lukaku and, and Oh, and Seamus really well. And fucking Coleman. Them. Yes. <laughs> <Back from the death>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was. I, I the oh, fact that he well. took that long break and came back and he just seemed like a different dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Is, hey, by the way, did I noticed him towards the end of that game struggling with his shoulder? He was complaining about yeah. something. I didn't see what happened. Know, he looked like he was complaining to the linesman or something. Like, didn't didn't you see that? But I didn't see it. Yeah, I saw it. I, yeah, I see. He did them. Um, no post-match media duties and it, it didn't you know didn't look well good. not not that this is an exclusive but um i was fortunately e- eavesdropping dropping dropping <laughs> dropping <laughs> fix that please jerry <laughs> um yeah i was part of my kind of responsibilities i have to go in the tunnel after the game to get the referee's card just to check all the stats add up um and coleman went past and somebody did say to him uh How's the shoulder? He said, oh, it's fine, it's fine. And give it like a little, so fingers crossed, that shouldn't be anything long term. I hope anyway, because he has been, he has been really yeah. good to his credit. All right. Last thing, make it quick, only because it's a sore, I, 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 I don't know how to feel about it, but would you have, would you have Lukaku back at this point, Max? Yeah. I mean, what, yeah. How, how, for how much? Oh, pressing me a bit there to give you an evaluation on the spot. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I've been, I've been watching a lot more of Yusuf Paulson for um, Leipzig lately, and I'm more in favour of getting someone mm. and like him in. So I'd rather go for him than Lukaku. But how much did we originally sell him for? Seventy-five like 70 or something. Yeah, it wouldn't be anywhere. And that's not including like the add-ons, 50. I believe. So. Uh, what do you what do you think? Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he did seem a little salty after the game. I think he deleted. There was like a a goodbye Instagram message or something from Everton, and he deleted it. I think he's 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 a little angry. Uh, it's just banter, man. Just banter. Yeah. Right? He's, got, uh, he's got yeah. He's got an absolute cheek after that performance at Old Trafford just yep. after he left. That's what I'm talking oh, about. Honest to God. <laughs> and, um, I, I think I, I think I got caught on camera on on Sky Sports giving him giving him a mouthful. <laughs> I'm so angry I didn't we didn't have that I or I somehow missed it because if ah uh. Dave would you have him I um I wouldn't have him back no I think and I, I I'm not in the camp of hating him and saying he was he was crap in this mm-hmm. and I scored a lot of goals for this but um I'm hoping Everton have got a kind of new identity going forward um, potentially looking at you know young, exciting players, and obviously I know Lukaku's still young in the grand scheme of things, but I'd like to think Brands maybe has a different direction, and I just I don't know, I just I don't really see Lukaku in the plans or want him to be in the. You know, really. Max, I I actually think Paulson fits the mold of what Everton are doing moving forward compared to Lukaku. Like I think he fits it more. You know, yeah, um, I and I don't know that. I mean, it's it's hard to sit there and be like, well, if Lukaku cost you 30, 
thirty million, you, you I mean, it's hard not to take him at that point. But he's not. He's not going to cost that much. Mm. It's going to be fifty, sixty, and you want to make sure that you're. But honestly, I have an issue with with his attitude still. I do. You know what I mean? There's something that Calvert Lewin is doing, attitude wise, selfless, that that Lukaku just never really did. You know, I think there's a dist- distinct mm. difference. And plus, if we if, if we remember this quote as well when he left and he talked about how Everton would set up in a certain way against the bigger teams, which was kind of sit back and wait to counter. We haven't really changed that kind of philosophy, but he was right. talking about it negatively. Um, whereas Cal- you couldn't imagine Calvert Lewin having complain, chasing balls down. That's so um, I'd take him for his goals. Which I assume probably what you were alluding to, Max. But yeah, it's tough. Else. Um, no. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like I, we were watching the game, and the, the crowd was booing Lukaku, and my, you know, my kid Ben is like, I don't hate Lukaku, and I'm like, I, I know, I'm with you, all right, but maybe he shouldn't talk bad about Everton. You know, maybe maybe yeah. that's why they're they're booing him. You know, so I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, Ever- Everton 4, United nil, just like we predicted on our match preview. I said four goals. Oh! I, you know, didn't know how I, don't, I don't know if you, everybody <laughs> caught that. That was, that was Max clutching at straws. Just, just reaching so far. <laughs> Winning on a technicality, I think, the goal. Is. Yeah, mm-hmm. none of us picked a win. Um, Max and I were the closest picking draws. So, they're... There we go. See, so, yeah, I'm trying to just ride on Max's like claim on that too. All right, but that's it for our reaction. Uh, stay tuned. We got a U23 segment. We're gonna go a little bit more in detail about the the squad. They they're the champions of uh, Premier League Two. So we're gonna talk about that with uh, with Dave here. And uh, uh, when I say we, I was talking about Max because he's he's sort of a regular now. You know what I mean? So yeah. Uh, but if you uh, you know what, Dave? I don't know how to plug you anymore. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, just keep an eye on Dave's Twitter to figure it because, because really well, that's the days, thing. It was yeah. usually very specific. You're going to be in this paper or this publication or this one, but now you're kind mm-hmm. of at you get a lot of them. So do you want wherever the people need me, Jerry? Oh, it's. Do you want me to just tell them to kind of uh, uh, keep an eye on your Twitter, and he'll tell you know, or is there another way? Yeah, if. If you're a fool that wants to keep up, up to date with this stuff, then yeah, Twitter's probably the best. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't publish a lot of my work on there just because, well, what, you know, there's, there's a lot of it. Oh, if you think about it, two or three articles a day. Um, so it's, but normally if it's, considering we're talking to an Everton, Everton audience, anything I normally do on Everton, I'll put on there. So right. yeah, just keep an eye on the Twitter. So- you heard the man. That's what's going on there. All right. So if you want more David, check that out. Um, yeah. And if you uh, if you want if you want more Max, keep an eye on his Twitter. He'll tell you what's what's going on. And as usual, if you see him in the street, firm handshake, make eye contact. Uh, he, he'll always he'll always have some stuff <laughs> on Toffee Blues website. He's got a lot of analysis on there uh, and other spots. So keep it on his Twitter. Uh, that's that's it for this. Uh, let's let's go talk about U23s, gentlemen. Bye.